The Nintendo 64 was a great console. But if you're a JRPG fan, you might have been a bit disappointed with the JRPGs available. Hey there, my name is Justin, aka Shanky, and this is Shanky JRPGs, and I'm here to talk about 10 games on the Nintendo 64 that you might enjoy if you're a JRPG fan. After the Super Nintendo having such an amazing lineup of JRPGs, many people picked up the Nintendo 64, expecting that amazing lineup to continue. After all, more power means better games, right? Unfortunately, as the Nintendo 64 was still using cartridge-based media, many developers decided to move on to the Sony PlayStation, as it used CDs which were cheaper to produce and offered more data space. Just for comparison, the largest size for a Nintendo 64 cartridge was 512 megabytes as opposed to the PlayStation CDs that could carry 650 megabytes per disc, with the option for multiple discs. However, this doesn't mean that the Nintendo 64 didn't have some great games. Today, I'm going to talk about 10 Nintendo 64 games that you might enjoy if you're a JRPG fan. Before we get started though, if you want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and tell me what games on the Nintendo 64 would you suggest to somebody wanting to scratch that JRPG itch? Anyways, let's ice that drink and pop some corn. Let's get into 10 Nintendo 64 games you might like if you're a JRPG fan. Mega Man 64, released on January 10th, 2001 by Capcom. Mega Man 64 was a port of the previously released Mega Man Legends for the PlayStation, being almost identical in almost every way. Mega Man 64 differs from the classic Mega Man style, as instead of a 2D platformer, it is now a 3D action-adventure game featuring Mega Man Volnut. So why would you enjoy this game if you enjoy JRPGs? Well, first and foremost, Mega Man 64 features a pretty in-depth story, complete with cutscenes and voice acting alongside some great dungeon crawling and various enemies. You can even craft equipment based on things you find in dungeons, if that's something that you enjoy. These weapons can range from a grenade launcher, to a laser blade, to a vacuum, to even a shining beam cannon. There's a ton of exploration and NPCs to talk to, and the bosses are really fun. Mega Man 64 is such a joy to play, and if you need that story itch scratch, this is definitely a great way to do it. Hybrid Heaven, released on August 31st, 1999 by Konami. Hybrid Heaven is a very unique game. It's like if you took a futuristic Tomb Raider, added in RPG elements, and gave it some puzzle elements to round it out. The closest game I could possibly relate it to would probably be Vagrant Story. The story is weird, and I could swear it was inspired by Blade Runner. When you get into combat, the game turns almost into a turn-based fighting game, where you select a limb, an attack, and whereabouts on the enemy you want to attack, and attacks can range from punch combos to various holds, or you can even suplex the enemy. If you're the one being attacked, you have to select the correct type of defense. It's really interesting, and I'm surprised this IP didn't continue. Playing the game now might seem incredibly slow and cumbersome, but back in 1999, Hybrid Heaven was such a unique experience, and as such is one I won't ever forget. Bomberman Hero released on August 31st, 1998 by Hudson Soft. Bomberman Hero is one of the story-based Bomberman games that the Nintendo 64 seemed to get plenty of, but this one is one of my favorites. The story is simple, a princess steals information from the evil empire and smuggles it out through a robot, but then she gets captured. Bomberman hears about this, and off you go to save the princess. The game plays out in five different planets with several stages within each planet much more platforming oriented as Bomberman can now jump, and on top of that you get different types of bombs, such as ice and salt bombs, to solve various puzzles. You also get various tools, such as a jetpack, a snowboard, or an underwater propeller, changing up how you explore. As a bonus, the soundtrack of Bomberman here is wonderful. Almost vacation-y to a sense, it really just adds to the enjoyment of the game. Absolutely pick it up if you need a little bit of an explodey adventure in your life. If you're enjoying this video so far and want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around for a while. 
Castlevania Legacy of Darkness, released on December 8, 1999, is an action-adventure game by Konami. Probably one of the worst Castlevania games to ever exist. Yes, worse than Lords of Shadow 2. Fight me, Belmont. That being said, the only reason it's so awful is the limitations due to it being on the Nintendo 64, and the controls are suffering due to that. Castlevania Legacy of Darkness stars Man-Beast, Cornell, who is trying to prevent his adoptive sister Ada from becoming a sacrifice to resurrect Dracula. Legacy of Darkness is a little bit strange because it's a prequel to Castlevania 64, which was only released earlier in 1999. And this game actually includes the original with improved graphics and alternate versions of some levels. Possibly the fastest re-release I've ever seen of any game. And this game is really dark. Not story or plot-wise, but visually. It's super dark, which can be a bit frustrating, but it also ties into the whole horror feel that Castlevania is known for. I'd suggest this game to anyone who's a fan of JRPGs because, well, it may not be an RPG in any sense of the word, but it has such a good story with some unexpected plot twists that will make a JRPG fan feel right at home. Also, Cornell is just cool, so that's a bonus, right? Quest 64, or El Tail Monsters, or Holy Magic Century, released on July 9th, 1999 by Imagineer. Seriously, why does this game have so many different names? Who hasn't heard about Quest 64? It's one of those infamous games generally thought of as a terrible game. Personally, I really enjoy it, and it's one of the few actual JRPGs on the Nintendo 64. Despite the quality of the game, I found it incredibly fun. Brian is a cute, innocent little magician who goes around setting various wildlife on fire, or smacking them in the face with a rock, or maybe drowning them. Okay, maybe he's not that nice after all. Okay, enough about the sociopathic Brian. Quest 64 is okay. It's not mind-blowing, but it's a short adventure and it's an actual JRPG on the Nintendo 64. The story isn't anything spectacular, as you're on an adventure to find the Elletail book that was stolen from your cathedral while hunting for elemental gems. You're hunting for elemental gems. I swear I've seen that in a game before. Uh, I have no idea. But anyways, it's all been done before, but it was actually a lot of fun. Quest 64 is average, but it's a lot of fun and not all that difficult, so anyone can just pick it up and enjoy it. Mystical Ninja starring Gomon, released on April 16th, 1998 by Konami. Do you enjoy those games with insanely hilarious dialogue and ridiculous stories? What about games about Europeans trying to take over Japan to turn it into the world's biggest stage by the power of robots? Well, that's what Mystical Ninja starring Gomon is all about in a nutshell. I think anyone that has played silly games with hilarious dialogue, Tales of Hearts comes to mind, will love this game. Mystical Ninja features everything anime and JRPG stand for. Giant mechs? Check. Japan setting? Check. Crazy anime succeeding musical theme? Check. The impact theme has to be one of the most beautiful themes in any game I've ever played. Also, one more thing. The game plays out like a comedy Broadway musical. It even includes a laugh track. So that's definitely one reason why anyone would fall in love with this game. Harvest Moon 64, released on December 21st, 1999, the Nintendo 64 game is actually the third game in the series after the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy version. And what can I say about Harvest Moon that hasn't been said before? Harvest Moon is a farming simulator where you manage a farm and build up relationships with the town people, and eventually you get married and have children. There's just something about a farming simulator that satisfies the JRPG itch. Namely the side quests, because, I mean, you can never have enough cute, wholesome side quests. There's no combat, no pressure, other than the stamina and time limits. You can also live your lifelong dream of raising cows and chickens to overtake the town and become its reigning overlord. That last part may or may not be true. You can be the judge of it. Do you enjoy farming games? What's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Worms Armageddon, released on March 23rd by Team17. Destruction. Oh, so much destruction. Worms Armageddon has no story, no characters, only destruction. 
Did you ever play those old Windows 95 angle and power based tank games where you're supposed to select the angle and select the power to aim your cannon and kill the opposing tank? That's basically Worms Armageddon if it was in a 5v5 format. The only reason I chose this game as a game that a JRPG lover might enjoy is because of its turn based format. With several weapons and movement abilities, this game is just wonderful. I remember playing this back in high school with my friends all night and waking up my parents with unending laughter. Worms Armageddon is never ending laughs and it may cause you to lose friends out of spite, but it's so worth it. This has Smash Brothers levels of enjoyment and I'm so glad it's available to play on Steam with online play. Custom Robo, released on December 8th, 1999 in Japan by Nintendo. I'm just gonna say it now. I hate that we haven't got a game in this series for years and years. In fact, I think the last game we got was Custom Robo Arena in 2007. The concept of Custom Robo is simple. Your hero receives a Custom Robo named Ray on his birthday, and you decide to find other people with Custom Robos to fight and obtain new parts to become a Custom Robo Master. Think Pokemon, but with toy robots with actual weapons. I love Custom Robo, and the best thing I can compare it to is probably a more kid-friendly Armored Core. Custom Robo gameplay is incredibly fun, and the reason I feel JRPG fans would love this game is because all the customization options. You can change everything from the armor to the weapons, to the melee weapons, to the energy boosters. Everything is customizable in these games. It's honestly insane what you can do with your robos. Hopefully, when the Switch successor comes out, Nintendo considers bringing this IP back. I really miss it, and I feel it would be well received these days. Last, but absolutely not least, Paper Mario, released on August 11th, 2000 by Intelligent Systems. Another actual RPG on the Nintendo 64. I love this game so much. Paper Mario was my first experience with a Mario RPG as I didn't get to play Super Mario RPG until about 2010. Paper Mario is probably one of the most adorable games I've ever played. The art style of Paper Mario is just so pleasing to look at, the music is wonderful, and I adore the partner characters and the humor of this game is just peak. I love all the paper based puns, it's wonderful. I feel most people probably played Paper Mario, but if you haven't, and you only have a Nintendo 64, Paper Mario should be at the top of your list to scratch that JRPG desire you may have. Also, I'll just mention it is on the Nintendo Switch Online, so that's always an option if you don't have access to a Nintendo 64. So there you have it, 10 games on the Nintendo 64 that a JRPG would enjoy. The Nintendo 64 was a bit lacking in JRPG content, but there are a few gems that would speak to anybody into that genre. Did I miss any games that should have been mentioned? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my weekly JRPG content. Anyways, thanks for watching, I appreciate all of your support, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro Force.